All right, welcome back. We're gonna talk about higher order derivatives and higher order derivatives are just derivatives of derivatives. So if I were to take the derivative of the derivative of a function, what would be that derivative? I'm saying derivative like 20 times here, but it's actually not too difficult. What we would do is we would just take our function that we took a derivative of and we take a derivative of it again using the derivative rules we know how to use. But the new thing with higher order derivatives or taking a derivative more than once is the notation. There's a lot of notation to learn, although most of it is pretty intuitive, and that's what we're going to look at here before we look at some examples. But here we are taking the derivative of f prime of x, which we know to be the derivative of a function f of x. And in this case, the derivative of that derivative is going to be f double prime of x. And this is just one of many of our notations to show a second derivative. That is what this is called here. So we originally had our function f of x that we took a derivative of, right? We had d dx and we took the derivative of f of x and we found that that was equal to f prime of x. But now if we take the derivative of f prime of x, we are going to get f double prime. And then if we were to take the derivative of f double prime or the second derivative, we would get the third derivative or f triple prime and so on. And so now's a good time to quickly look at our notation for higher order derivatives. So here they all are. It's a lot to take in at first, but trust me, it's actually fairly intuitive. Here's our first derivative notation that we've already seen. We know that we can write that the derivative of a function is f prime of x. And if the function was denoted with y, the derivative would be y prime or dy dx. And of course, here is that notation from earlier where we have the derivative and the function inside the brackets. If we go to the second derivative or we take the derivative of a first derivative, we're gonna have f double prime of x or y double prime or d squared y over dx squared. And then we have this notation where we just have d squared over dx squared of our function. And all of these represent the second derivative of a function. And this continues on. And you'll see the pattern here that for a third derivative, we'll have f triple prime of x or y triple prime. And all these squares from before become cubes in these two notations. And then once we get to the fourth derivative, which would be the derivative of the third derivative, we change from using this prime notation to just putting the number that the derivative is, in this case, the fourth derivative, in parentheses. And so this signifies the fourth derivative of the function f of x. And this is the fourth derivative of y, and so on, right? And then from that point on, we can represent any higher order derivative with this notation down here for the nth derivative, which in this case is for any number past four, we can represent by just interchanging the value of n with the number of the higher order derivative we are interested in. So hopefully all of this notation makes sense but this is how we denote higher order derivatives. So let's take a look at an actual example of taking a derivative of a derivative. So here we have the function f of x is equal to 2x to the sixth power plus 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x minus 5. And we want to find the fourth derivative. So we're going to be taking a lot of derivatives here. So let's start by finding the first derivative. You can't skip right from the original function to the fourth derivative. You got to find all the derivatives before the fourth. So let's go through that. First, we'll find the first derivative, which is f prime of x. And that's going to be equal to taking the derivative of each one of these terms. Now, all these are just going to require the power rule or the constant rule. And so we can go through these pretty quickly by now. So our first one, we're gonna have six times two. So we'll have 12x. And then we're gonna subtract one from our exponent and have to the fifth power. Then we'll move on to our next term. We're gonna have the exponent times three. So we're gonna have three times three, which is going to be nine times x squared. Because if we subtract one from our exponent there, we'll have a two. And then we'll have minus eight x, right? If we take the derivative of negative four x squared, we will have negative eight x. And then we will have plus 12 plus zero, right? Because the derivative of a constant is zero and a derivative of a variable to the first power is just going to be equal to its coefficient, which is 12. And so then if we were to erase this zero, we then have our first derivative or f prime of x. So now we can move on to taking the derivative again to get our second derivative or f double prime of x. And so now let's take the derivative of our derivative. We're going to have five times 12, that's going to be 60 times x to the fourth power, right? We're still subtracting one from our power of five. And then we're going to add this to 18, which is two times nine times x. 
and then minus eight. And we'd also have another zero for this constant of 12, but again, I'm not going to write that. So now we have our second derivative of our original function. We took the derivative once to get our first derivative, and then we took the derivative of our first derivative to get the second derivative. Now let's move on to our third derivative. Remember, we gotta get all the way to the fourth derivative. So we'll have f triple prime of x is equal to four times 60, that's gonna be 240, times x to the third power, still subtracting one from that exponent, plus 18, right? Which would be the derivative of 18x, and then we'd have zero for negative eight. And that's going to be our third derivative. So now we just have to take one more derivative to finally find our answer of the fourth derivative. And so if we take that fourth derivative, we will find that it is going to be equal to three times 240, which is going to be 720 times x squared. And we just have the derivative of a constant, which is going to be zero. So finally, we have our answer here that the fourth derivative is equal to 720 x squared. So that's really all there is to taking higher order derivatives. You just keep taking another derivative of your previous derivative. Let's look at another example. Here we have y equals eight x to the three halves power, and we wanna find the second derivative, or y double prime, of this function. So let's start by finding the first derivative, and then we'll move from there. So we'll have y prime, or the first derivative, is equal to eight times our exponent, three halves, times x, and then one subtracted from our exponent, which is gonna be one half, right? Three halves minus one is going to be one half, and then we can simplify, and this will be equal to eight times three divided by two, which is going to give us 12 x to the one half power, which would also be 12 times the square root of x. But since we have to take another derivative here, we wanna find the second derivative. I'm gonna leave it in this form because that will make it easier to see how to use the power rule. So now let's find y double prime, or the second derivative of our function. We will now take the derivative of our derivative. So we're gonna have 12 times one half, times x to the one half power minus one, which is going to be negative one half. And so we can simplify this to be 12 times one half, which is gonna be six times x to the negative one half power. And we know that we can move a variable with a negative exponent to the denominator of a value, and that will give us a positive exponent. So then we'd have six over x to the one half power, which can then be changed back into a square root. So we're gonna have that this is equal to six divided by the square root of x. And so that would be the second derivative or y double prime of our original function, y equals eight x to the three halves power. So how about this function? How do we find the second derivative of y equals three x times sine x? Well, here we have a product rule, which is one of our methods for taking derivatives when we have two functions multiplied together. In this case, our two functions that I see would be three x and sine x. And so let's start by finding the first derivative of this function, and then we will find the second derivative. So we'll have dy dx, is equal to the derivative of our first function, 3x, which is going to be three times the original second function, so sine x, plus the original first function, 3x, times the derivative of our second function, which is going to be cosine x. And so our first derivative is going to be equal to three sine x plus three x cosine x. And now we're ready to take our second derivative. So d squared y, over dx squared, or our second derivative using this specific derivative notation, is going to be equal to the derivative of this, which is our first derivative. And so I see that we're gonna have a simple derivative of three sine x, and then we're gonna be adding this to a product rule of three x times cosine x. So we'll first start with our simple derivative here, and then we'll move on into our product rule. So the derivative of three times sine x is just going to be three times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So now let's move on to adding our product rule. So we're going to have the derivative of our first function, which is 3x. So that's going to be 3 times the original second function, which is cosine x. So we will have cosine x. And then we're going to add this to our original first function, which is 3x multiplied by the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And then we can simplify. This is going to be equal to three cosine x plus three cosine x. And then we can bring out this negative. So then our final term will be minus three x sine x. And then I see we have two three cosine x terms that we can add together to get our final answer that the second derivative is six cosine x minus three x sine x. 
and that's going to be our second derivative of our function 3x sine x. All right, so now let's talk about a use for higher order derivatives, or more specifically, an application for them for something that we are already familiar with. In the past, we have discussed rates of change and how the velocity represents a rate of how fast position is changing. We can extend this to talk about higher order derivatives, right? Because we had our position function, s of t, and then we took the derivative of that position function to find our velocity function. Well, now we can take another derivative right, we can have s double prime of t, which would also be equal to the derivative of the velocity function. These are going to be equal to the acceleration function. And so when we are looking at rates of change, if you are given a position function and you want to know the acceleration function for that scenario, you can take the derivative to find the velocity and then take the derivative of that velocity to find your acceleration. And this acceleration function represents the rate at which velocity is changing, right? So if velocity is a rate of how position is changing, acceleration is going to be a rate at which velocity is changing. So with that being said, let's look at an example where we have to find the acceleration function. So here we have the position function 9t squared minus 2t plus 25, and we wanna find the acceleration function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take two derivatives of this position function. So we'll start by taking the first derivative, which is going to be equal to our velocity function, and we will get two times nine, that's going to be 18, and then one from our power is going to just leave us with t, to the first power, and then we'll move on to our next part, which is going to be just negative two, because we have a variable to the first power, so the derivative is just going to be that coefficient. And then finally, the derivative of 25 will just be zero, because 25 is a constant. So this right here is our velocity function. So now let's find our acceleration function by taking another derivative. So that's going to be the second derivative of the position function, which is going to be the first derivative of the velocity function. And that's going to be equal to the acceleration function. And in this case, that's going to be the derivative of 18t minus two. And so we're gonna be left with just 18. And this is actually our acceleration function for this scenario, because the derivative of 18t is just going to be 18. And of course, the derivative of negative two is just zero. And so that's all there is to finding the acceleration function. We just take the derivative of our position function twice, or the derivative of our velocity function once. All right, and so that's all I had about higher order derivatives. If you wanna see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked in the description as well as at the end of this video that you can click on. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But that's all I have for now, so I will see you next time.